here with new episode of Soloing Secrets and this is Uli John Roth and I've had some requests to feature more of Uli's music and if you search on my channel you'll find a three for all surrounding him you know from a couple years ago just look for the sky guitar or do a search you know with his name and you'll find that lesson but this episode is going to do a deep dive into his soloing style or his soloing secrets and there's a lot to be found and for those of you that don't know because Uli is kind of a misunderstood lesser known obscure you know guitar legend but an essential cornerstone of neoclassical rock and metal and shred guitar, you know, hyperactive guitar playing and diminished arpeggio string skipping. There's all kinds of stuff going on, you know, in his music. And he definitely had a major impact and influence on lots of guitarists, namely Yngwie Malmsteen, Paul Gilbert, uh, Marty Friedman, Wolf Hoffman. I mean, there's a whole bunch of players. Michael Romeo. There's a whole bunch of players that absolutely love Uli John Roth. And, you know, a solo artist, also had his own band, Electric Sun, and famously he was, you know, an early guitarist in the band Scorpions, you know, right after Michael Schenker left after their first album. He appeared on four, you know, Scorpion albums, uh, a live album, the Tokyo Tapes. Then he left and Michael Schenker came back for a few more albums, but definitely that period with Scorpions influenced and impacted, you know, rock guitar all over the world. So just like we've done in other episodes in the Soloing Secret series, when you're checking out a certain guitarist or musician, it's always a good idea to check out their influences, you know, the artists and musicians that influence them. Because typically that will reveal certain things that pop up in their music or in their playing, you know, certain habits and licks and ideas. And with Uli, there's an assorted cast of characters. Definitely Jimi Hendrix is a major influence, you know, on him and his music. He's carried that, you know, the entire time, almost his entire career. But then, you know, other musicians too, of course, Jeff Beck and Clapton and players like that. A lot of classical composers, you know, Bach and Mozart and Paganini and players like that. But here's an image with some of Uli's elusive musical influences. As far as Uli's solo and secrets, the things he typically likes to do when he picks up a guitar and plays a lick or a solo or, you know, a song. And there's a lot here, too. Exotic scales, you know, chromatic ideas, string skipping, diminished arpeggios, um, you know, odd note groupings and rhythmic, you know, kind of quirks and stuff. But here's an image with some of Uli's soloing secrets. Now, in his early years, Uli was playing a Strat a lot. I mean, that was his kind of go-to guitar back when he was playing with the Scorpions. But then eventually he, you know, released and designed the custom Sky guitar. And I've never played a Sky guitar, but I've always looked at them and wondered, like, I wonder what that feels like or plays like or sounds like. Because it's, you know, very unique, very unlike anything else I've ever seen. I think some of the instruments have six or seven strings. Some of them have upwards of, like, 30 frets. Some of them have fretless, uh, you know, like a fretless, you know, fretboard in the upper reaches. And it's just a really unusual and unique design. But I'd love to play a Sky Guitar just to see what all the fuss is about. So there's no question, Uli's influence in rock and metal guitar and shred guitar is everywhere. I mean, his music and ideas saturated everything. And you got to think this is before Eddie Van Halen, before Randy Rhodes and Ingve and all that stuff, before that, pre-Shred. And you got to think back then you had Richie Blackmore, eventually you saw people like John McLaughlin, Al Di Miola, you know, Alan Holdsworth definitely came out. But then, uh, you know, eventually Uli John Roth came out, you know, with Scorpions, you know, it was initially uh, kind of a European thing. It didn't really hit a global audience until, you know, a few years later. But it was a trickle, you know, people heard it and they heard him playing 
he actually hadn't toured in America, you know, for a long time after Scorpions. He never actually toured with the Scorpions in the U.S. So his influence and name here was kind of fuzzy, but definitely there's no question. His influence on players, especially Ingbe Malmsteen, is documented and legendary for sure. I mean, he literally passed that torch right to Ingbe. So the music and ideas in this episode came from three different Uli John Roth related albums. Two albums with the Scorpions and one album with his band Electric Sun. And there's a lot of music, you know, floating around out there, either under Scorpion's name with Uli's music or his own name or Electric Sun. And there's some guest appearances and stuff out there too. But, uh, you know, definitely we're going to target very specific things. We're going to look at exotic scales, some of Uli's favorite scales, licks, and, you know, parts from songs and stuff like that. So if you're a fan, get ready, because here we go. With the opening jam, that's the song Electric Sun from Uli's Electric Sun Band, and that came from the album Earthquake from 1979. And if you haven't heard Earthquake, I highly recommend it. It'll blow your mind. But it starts with this kind of diminished, implied uh, single note riff with a strange rhythm like this. <laughs> using my thumb for that root note. You could fret that if you want to. I just kind of use my thumb there. Like that. And then repeat that riff. Get those little octave slides. Like that. And then you do the riff again. And right there, you've got this Hendrix string catch uh, bend. And it's really tricky. You're going to bend the C up a whole step, then you're going to move over and catch the, uh, the B string, and you're going to grab that G note and release the bend on the B string. So you're bending up on the high E and releasing the bend on the B string. That's hard. And then you're doing, you're going to bend that E up and then end on D. Weird lick, but really cool. Then you got this melodic line. And the song keeps going there. I actually, during the opening jam, I just went back to that intro riff and ended it. But that's a killer song, especially if you're a Hendrix fan, that blues rock kind of flavor, which did, you know, kind of appear a lot in Uli's early music. Okay, next up, we're going to take a look at some of Uli's favorite scales and kind of reveal, you know, these exotic flavors and tonalities that you hear in his music. And there are a lot of scales, you know, that pop up in his, his playing and his ideas. And definitely there's a lot of pentatonic and blues scale, you know, licks and phrases. And that comes from his Hendrix influence and other, you know, blues and rock influences. But then his exotic sounds come from his classical influences. And typically you'll find Aeolian, Phrygian, Harmonic Minor, and Phrygian Dominant used a lot in Uli's music. Not to mention, you know, chromatic scales and whole tone scales and stuff like that. But let's do this in A minor to start with. And we're just going to start with A Aeolian. And there's a little one octave pocket that we're going to target right here, like this. Right, just the good old A natural minor scale, or A Aeolian. It's just the alphabet A through G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? Now let's 
play the scale and I want you to ascend right there and then when you get to the, the root I want you to move back to the seventh and then go back to the root just to really exaggerate you know where the seventh is to kind of help you hear it at the top and the bottom of the scale like this <laughs> to Phrygian and to do that we only have to change one note we're just gonna lower the second which was B we're gonna change that B to a B flat keep everything else the same and now it's magically a Phrygian <laughs> that all we have to do is change the seventh which is G we're gonna raise that G to G sharp and play a raised seventh and now it's a harmonic minor like this <laughs> And to find that, let's go back to Phrygian. Just a reminder that was natural minor with a flat two, and we found a Phrygian like that. Now Phrygian dominant is actually a mode from the harmonic minor scale. It's the fifth mode. So a Phrygian dominant shares the exact same notes as D harmonic minor. So here's D harmonic minor. Now if we play that scale and start on A. Phrygian dominant. So it's Phrygian with a major third right there, that C sharp. And everything else is the same. But just keep in mind, Phrygian dominant comes from harmonic minor and it's the fifth mode. So A, uh, Phrygian dominant comes from D, harmonic minor. Just a heads up, but starting right now, everything else in this episode is going to be tuned down a half step. So now we're going to visit some of Uli's music when he was playing with Scorpions, and they tuned down a half step. And this came from the song First Light, which is from the album Taken by Force by Scorpions, a great, you know, Scorpions song, and a commonly overlooked great Scorpions album, too. And this features, you know, one of Uli's giant bends, like these kind of ear-piercing Hendrix-inspired bends. So we're tuned down a half step, and this is in the key of E, and we're doing this. You know, giant bend right there. So we are tuned down a half step, thankfully, so there's a little less string tension, but we're still bending this G all the way up to a B, and you could do that with your pinky. But you might have noticed I was using my third finger right there. Just to make it a little bit more easy, you know, to kind of bend that far. But that's a big bend, that's two whole steps, G up to a B. So don't break strings out there. Grab that bend with some authority and then you're coming down E minor pentatonic. And you're gonna grab this. It's like a pre-bend on that A, you know, bend up to B and then you're releasing it. And then you're gonna do this G to A back to G bend. It's a tricky bend for sure. Vibe there. Next up are a pair of licks that came from the song Catch Your Train. This came from the classic Scorpions album Virgin Killer and these are in the key of A and we're still tuned down a half step. And this first lick has one of those ear you know piercing bends once again and it should remind you of a specific and certain guitarist. I'm not going to mention names but his initials are YJM like this. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention names, but that's totally an Yngwie bend right there in the beginning. You know, very expressive, you know, that C sharp up to D and back. And then he starts doing, you know, that kind of D up to that B, like a pull out. And then... That's actually 
especially during the intro solo, and then during the actual guitar solo, you're going to hear another lick like this. You know, really cool phrase. Also a very common phrase. There's lots of guitarists that play that way, but you got to think this is in the mid-70s, back when he was playing with Scorpions. Nobody was playing guitar like that back then, but Uli was. <laughs> think, you know, E minor pentatonic, but we're doing this, you know, uh, or I guess you could also relate that to, to A or A minor, but you're doing this big, you know, leap right there from A to E, right? And then you're grabbing that. So you're kind of doing like an E blue scale right there too with a flat five. Next up's a bizarro lick that takes place in Sales of Sharon. This came from the album Taken by Force by Scorpions, and it kind of reminds me of Chopin or something. But uh, Sales of Sharon actually has this flamenco kind of exotic, you know, flavor. It kind of revolves around C Phrygian dominant, and then it drifts back into C Phrygian. You know, C Phrygian dominant right here. And that kind of explains like the tonality and the chord progression that you hear near the beginning. the C movement, and it's happening a lot there. And then for this bizarro lick, this takes place during the intro guitar solo, and you'll hear Uli do this. You know, what a bizarre lick. fret now a little bit it's the half step you know down tuning I think it's getting a little buzzy right there but we're starting with this chromatic movement here and then it's really interesting right there and that's how I'm fingering you know that that particular idea you know I'm using uh, index middle and third and then I'm coming back with my third finger so I can end with my index right there on that uh, B flat and then middle finger right here and the A flat and G slid, and you can actually see him doing that in the music video, even though it's you know long before MTV, but it's a performance, you know, music video. So right there. And then A flat and G slid, and then I'm sliding E to F right there. And that's really bizarre. So you're doing um G and B flat right there. So one more time real slow. A little faster. You know, the way it just kind of comes out, it's just real smooth and effortless, but it's going to take a little bit of practice to get that into your fingers. Really cool. The last but not least is actually an extended trill that revolves around D Phrygian dominant. This came from the song Pictured Light from the album Virgin Killer by Scorpion, so we're still tuned down a half step. And it's interesting because he's position shifting and trilling his way through D Phrygian dominant, which is really cool. And you can hear the Ingve influence, but I'm also hearing Randy Rhodes here. So you can kind of hear like the influence that Uli had on Randy Rhodes. And we're in, basically you know, revolving around D Phrygian dominant. And it's like this. One more time. Something like that. So it's definitely D Phrygian dominant bass. like that we're doing it on one string so we're gonna start right there D and E flat and then C and D B flat and C A and B flat G and A and then this F sharp and G and then D and E flat and then right there it's uh, G and A and then right here it actually begins trilling uh, F sharp and G and you're going to move that up basically a minor third. And right there you want to move all the way up to D and E flat. And then right there F sharp and G at the end. And then just end on that G. 
So all the way through, really slow. And that lick actually takes place numerous times in that song. And it's actually harmonized and it's massive. It takes place during the verses, actually. It's a verse fill. But one more time at speed like this. <laughs> It's a great trill workout, and you could use other fingers, you know, aside from just your index and middle. But check that out. That's a killer trill workout, and it totally sounds like Randy Rhodes. All right, that's going to wrap this look at the soloing secrets of Uli John Roth. Definitely an essential, you know, very important, influential, massively influential guitarist. If Uli had never existed, definitely Ingbe Malmsteen would sound completely different. But then a lot of other guitarists would too. You know, and I've read interviews with different players like Paul Gilbert and... Uh, you know, George Lynch and some of these different players. And there's a lot of respect, you know, and definitely like within like the last 10 or 15 years, definitely a lot of people have paid tribute. You know, I mean, Uli's, you know, been a part of G3 tours, you know, and toured with people like Steve Vai and appeared on stage with Steve Morris and Petrucci and a whole bunch of different people. Uh, you know, Joe Satriani, obviously, too, with G3. But a uh, very important, commonly overlooked, kind of obscure guitarist, especially in today's world. And the only people that really seem to kind of stand up for Uli and kind of talk about him are his fans, you know, his loyal, dedicated fan base, whether they're solo artists, Electric Sun, or Scorpions fans. Uh, I mean, there's no question. Uli or John Roth is essential, and he changed the face of guitar, just like Hendrix and Richie Blackmore and Clapton and all these, you know, legendary guitarists. But most people don't know Uli's name, and they should. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.